In Oklahoma, we had a botched execution, um, and you've probably heard about this, but let me quickly go over the details of the execution before I tell you what's happening next. Uh, 13 minutes after a doctor administered a lethal injection at the state's death chamber in McAllister, Lockett, who was uh, set to be executed that day, uh, lifted his head and started mumbling. Uh, now that's a problem because he's supposed to be knocked unconscious right away with a cocktail of drugs that they have and then supposed to pass away peacefully. When you raise your head 13 minutes later and start talking, eh, that's an execution gone awry. Uh, Jerry Massey, who's a State Corrections Department spokesperson, explained, we believe that a vein was blown and the drugs weren't working as they were designed to. The director ordered a halt to the execution. When you have to uh, order a halt to the execution midway through the execution, things are not going well. Now you can blame it on the guy's veins all you like, but obviously you didn't know what the hell you were doing. Now it got worse. He explains that Lockett died of an apparent massive heart attack about 40 minutes after the procedure started. So that's not the way it's supposed to go. That would seem to be cruel and unusual punishment, although these days it has become far more usual, and unfortunately we're starting to get used to it. Now, further detail from Reuters, witness Ziva Brandsetter told broadcaster MSNBC Lockett was thrashing about and appeared to be in pain. The state blocked off the scene from witnesses a few minutes after the trouble started by drawing a curtain on the execution chamber. Now when you have to draw a curtain on the execution chamber, that's another clue that perhaps you're not doing it right and that you're embarrassed for how badly you've bungled this. So, now, what's going to be the reaction? Well, you know how Republicans are. Uh, they're going to go ahead and say, well, come on, this is so bad. In fact, let me quote a quote from Senator James Inhofe from the state of Oklahoma. He says, now this happened. I don't remember the guy's name. How nice of you. Uh, but I do know that he raped and then with a sawed-off shotgun shot the girl and buried her alive. And the people who were concerned about how much he must have suffered, they ought to think about how much she suffered. And I don't think that should change anything. Well, you see, Senator Inhofe, that's one of the problems here which is that you've now unnecessarily created some degree of sympathy for a guy who was a brutal murderer. And you didn't need to create that sympathy. Now people are worried about that guy writhing around for 40 minutes. And by the way, we have a thing called the US Constitution, and it says right in there, you cannot do cruel and unusual punishment. You can't torture people to death for 40 minutes. It, it, because that doesn't tell you anything about that guy. That tells you something about us. Is that what we want to do? Or is he saying in this statement, I don't give a damn how much we torture him, which actually, given Senator Inhofe's record, is probably his stated position. He was totally in favor of torture under the Bush-Cheney administrations. So as this guy rides around in pain for 40 minutes, I every evidence in the world, including his own quotes, to say that he's in favor of that. Now that's supposed to be un-American. We're supposed to be against torture, or at least we were for a long time in this country. But he's not alone. Tom Coburn, also a senator from Oklahoma, went on MSNBC. Now remember, Tom Coburn's a doctor, so of course he's gonna be very concerned about this, right? Perhaps not. The, the doctor that was there said they lost IV access. Right. Which means the drugs that were pushed didn't get there. So it's not the, it's the procedure, you're right, it's about procedure, but it's not about the policy, and it's not about the drugs, it was about the procedure. Uh, but it, it's, again, anytime you're doing anything with a body, things can go wrong. I love how he says that as an excuse, like, no, no, anything can go wrong, so perhaps we shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's the right answer, he says, no, no, no. Ah, it's a body, I don't know, we're thick sticking it with needles. And by the way, you know why they had trouble? It's because Europe has blocked some uh, drugs from coming over to this country because they know that we're using it to kill people in lethal injections. So now we're using a cocktail that was previously unproven. And lo and behold, by the way, the lawyers for the defense said, don't use this cocktail, you don't know what's gonna happen. Now, it turns out they were right. Lo and behold, we have this terribly botched execution. And then Coburn turns around and says, well, you never know what could happen with a body, so let's just try different things. No, that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is let's not try crazy stuff we've never done before in when we're trying to execute someone. All right, uh, now Coburn's not done yet. The generalization that it's botched time and time again really doesn't hold up. There have been some errors, uh, but if you, I think if you look statistically, that that uh, that that's you know as a percentage, 
uh, it's a very, very small number. Uh, one. Uh, number two is uh, every medical student knows how to do this. I think this this is just is, uh, an error on the part of individuals to uh, not follow a protocol that should have been followed. And if we were perfect at everything, uh, you all wouldn't be on TV and I wouldn't be here. Yeah, we're not perfect at everything, so let's just execute people without really knowing what we're doing. Yay! I mean, it happens sometimes. What's the big deal? Here's uh, uh, just some examples of how it's happened recently. Uh, Ohio executioners in 2006 needed a, a, more than an hour to put Joseph Clark to death because of uh, trouble with his veins. Uh, Florida killer Angel uh, Diaz took 36 minutes to die because uh, they were using lethal drugs uh, that could not, that penetrated his veins and then his muscles, so went to the wrong place. So that's almost identical case as this. It's happened before, but hey, what the hell, let's just keep doing it anyway. Uh, there was Romel Brown in Ohio in 2009. They had to prick him with needles 18 different times to find his veins. Perhaps it's not a great way to do an execution, but undeterred in January of this year, Ohio had a similar problem with someone else, took 26 minutes to die uh, because of troubles they had executing him. In Florida once, uh, they had trouble with an electric chair back in the days that we, when we were doing that. And then uh, they had fried the guy for quite some time, but he wouldn't die. Then they put him back on death row and tried to execute him with an electric chair a year later. Okay, ah, oh, but hey, shit happens, right? Now, according to the Constitution, it's not supposed to happen. But Donnie Deutsch, uh, one of the pundits on uh, Morning Joe, uh, thinks it's no big deal. Shockingly, uh, you're gonna see here in a second that Joe Scarborough is actually on the right side of this, so let's let that play out. What was he on crime? What was his crime, by the way? Oh, it was, it was horrific. Oh, Murder and rape. Bring that out. He yeah. Shot a, yeah, yeah, and we talked about this yesterday. He shot a 19-year-old woman. Uh, and buried her alive, and uh, and it, just absolutely horrific. The other man on death row, uh, his his crime uh, was equally horrific as well. Sam Stein. And, and we're we're stumbling. What's that? That's right. And we're stumbling the fact that his death maybe happened a few seconds slower. No, no, no. We're stumbling. We're, stu we're stumbling because when you have somebody, well, first of all, the entire. Uh, the entire you know purpose. my point. You see my point. Uh, no, I don't. I, I'm, not just, I'm, just, of, of I'm not losing any sleep log. over what happened. Well, maybe you should lose sleep over no, the Constitution of the United States. All right, look at that. Morning Joe on the right side of it. Donnie Deutsch being a prick as usual. Ah, oh, what did he say? Took him two extra seconds. No, it took 40 extra minutes. Okay, get your facts right. And he says basically, I don't care if we torture people to death. Ah, because I think they're generally guilty. Oh, by the way, they're not always guilty. That's the point Sam Stein makes next. And to Donnie's point, and I would love Donnie to respond to this, two days before this execution took place, uh, a study came out showing that one out of every 25 people on death row, people who are executed, are likely innocent. And I'm wondering how, that, uh, how you feel about that uh, in light of what you said, which is, a, which is a commonly held position that these people deserved even a gruesome uh, botched execution because of the gruesome botch. Well, I guess I'll res respond committed. this way, that 3% of executions are botched. What percentage of any medical, and, and this is obviously for the senator, any medical procedure have botching, and we're stumbling over the 3% of the most heinous killers no, in the world? No, that wasn't my question to you, Donnie, which is that one out of 25 people who are killed on death row are innocent. I'm uh, still very no, much that, a capital punishment. That's not a fact. That's an estimate. Yeah, that is not a fact. That's an we'll estimate. And so it's okay. really important that we don't confuse facts with estimates. It is a fact that dozens of people on death row have actually been released because DNA evidence proved that they, in fact, were innocent. Now, luckily, they were released before they were killed by the state. Uh, it is an estimate that one out of 25 we have already killed were actually innocent based on DNA evidence and other forms of evidence. And he thinks, well, one out of 25, sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose some. Well, sometimes we torture them to death for 40 minutes, and they happen to be innocent. Hey, nobody's perfect. Hey, if nobody's perfect, that doesn't mean you should stop doing a lot of things. I agree with that. But when nobody's perfect, perhaps you should think about stopping doing executions because that's the final decision. There is nothing after that. Look, that's why I switched my position on capital uh, punishment. It's not that uh, I think that heinous murderers should never be put to death philosophically. It's just that we keep executing the wrong guys, and now we're beginning to torture them before we execute them. 
So that would mean that you're comfortable with us getting it wrong a decent amount of the time and doing it to innocent people anyway, which the two senators from Oklahoma, and I guess Donnie Deutsch there, are saying, yeah, what are we stumbling over? I'm perfectly comfortable with it. By the way, uh, they're probably going to get to keep on doing it. In a 2008 case, Chief Justice John Roberts ruled the Constitution does not demand the avoidance of all risk of pain in carrying out executions. In fact, the court has never uh, said that the executions or death penalty was wrong because of how they were administered. Though in 1976, they said the Constitution prohibits unnecessary and wanton infliction of pain, but the court has never ruled that these botched executions were a wanton infliction of pain. And in 1947, they said this, an isolated mishap during an execution does not violate the Eighth Amendment because such an event, while regrettable, does not suggest cruelty for, or a substantial risk of serious harm. Easy for them to say uh, if you were that guy who would just suffer for 40 minutes uh, gurgling and thrashing around and God knows what else he was doing before he died of a massive heart attack, you might feel differently. And if you were the family member of one of those who was executed wrongly, you would certainly feel differently.